Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mings, uh, and today I welcome you guys to another Advanced Wars by Web replay commentary. Have you ever wondered how a match against one of the best Advanced Wars players in the world would be like? How they would play, how they would strategize, or how badly they would beat you? Well, that is what we will be taking a look at in today's replay commentary, because today I challenged the guy who is currently ranked number one on the Global League scoreboards of Advanced Wars by Web. And if you don't know, there's something called the Global League. It matches you up against random opponents based on your matchmaking rating. And if you go to the leaderboards, you can see the top three ranked players of all time. And my opponent today is currently sitting at number one. He may not do that by the time this video goes up because there are multiple people competing for this rank, but right now he is the number one ranked player at Advanced Wars by Web, and I think we could probably safely say that this makes him one of the best Advanced Wars players in the world. I don't think there's any other big sites like Advanced Wars by Web doing competitive Advanced Wars. So this uh, league right here is pretty much our only way to gauge the best players in the world. So I sent this guy a message and I was like, hey man, I'd like to do a video where I challenge one of the world's best Advanced Wars players and play a match against you. Do you want to play against me? And he, he was very polite. He was like, yeah, I'd love to. Let's go. And I am not casting this match because I think I am worthy of playing against the best Advanced Wars players in the world. I don't think I'm anywhere near that level, but I thought it would make for an interesting video. I mean, I'm basically playing against the Grandmaster Champion right here, and I think it's going to be very interesting to analyze this game and see just how he plays, how he moves his units, what decisions he makes, and we just get to see the difference between someone like me and the best player in the world, you know? How is that not incredibly fascinating? I thought it would make for for a really cool video. So yeah, I'm going to be showing our match right here. Um, I am playing as Adder. You know, I wanted it, this to be a low-tier match, so I banned most of the CEOs. He was okay with this as well. Uh, I don't think Adder needs any further introductions. You know, whenever I play a low-tier match, Adder is pretty much my go-to CEO. I think he's pretty damn good. You know, he's got those amazing powers. Um, but my opponent is playing Eagle. Now, I did ban most of the high-tier CEOs, but I left Eagle in because... While I think Eagle is pretty good, uh, I, I don't really agree with Advanced Wars by Web rating him. Like, it rates him pretty highly. I guess it's because of his Lightning Strike, which is incredibly strong. But he actually picked Eagle. Now, his most played CO is actually Jake. I expected him to play that, but he, he went for Eagle right away. Of course, Eagle is pretty strong. He's got a pretty strong superpower. But we are playing on a very small map here. We're playing on a map called Tuck and Tumble. I selected a bit of a weird map. I actually went way back into the map pool because I figured, you know, this guy has played Global League for a very long time. So I'm going to pick a bit of a different map that he may not have a lot of experience with. Uh, so I found this one right here. It's a bit of a weird map, but I ended up liking it quite a bit. It turns out, though, air units are very strong on this map, which is probably why my opponent ended up picking Eagle. There's lots of rivers here, which makes Battlecopters extremely strong because they can retreat behind the rivers, and you will see my opponent use Battlecopters to great effect on this uh, match right here. There are two Com Towers that are kind of out of the way, so they won't really be fought over that much. The, the main fighting point of this map will be these four properties right here. There will also be skirmishes taking uh, place on these bridges right here, and you do also have these... Um, pipelines here which block air units from reaching into the center you'll have to blast them open if you want your air units to get out of there quickly of course they can just fly around but it'll take them a little bit longer but overall i thought this map was pretty interesting without further ado let's just jump into the match and see how it went so i'm playing as player two right here so i get an extra infantry as the second uh turn advantage my opponent opens up infantry I also open up infantry and I go for the base right away. We each have a third neutral base that can be captured relatively quickly. I will be able to get my base before him because I have an, an infantry already close to it. My opponent also goes for the infantry. Nothing special there. Uh, he does go for the for this property right away. Let's see if I do the same thing. I do indeed. So, so far we've opened up exactly the same. Except that I have that one extra infantry, of course. And I decide to send my infantry... Um, basically straightforward. Let's see if he does the same thing. It's very interesting to analyze our playstyles and see where we may differ. So he captures the city and he actually decides to do something completely different. Um, so that's very interesting. No, actually, no, never mind. The maps are mirrored, so I need to not get confused here. So he sent his infantry up here. Will I do the same thing? 
So he goes for the base, and he said, yeah, okay, so, so, so far we are actually moving completely um, synchron synchronous, synchron syn we're moving in perfect synchrony, that, that was the word I was looking for, I swear to god, guys, I'm good at English. Um, so yeah, we are currently doing exactly the same thing. And it's going to be very interesting to see where we may differ. So yeah, I go for this property right now. I move my infantry out as well. Both of us are just building infantry at the moment. No cheeky early game recons. So yeah, he also captures this property in the center. So so far, completely mirrored movements right here. This is where I think, yeah, so this is where we differ. So here he decides to go for this property, whereas I sent my infantry out here. So he is deciding to capture early instead of uh, going for one of the properties in the center. So already in the early game right here, we can see that he is focusing a lot more on his economy. I think he is so confident that he will be able to get the properties in the middle that he doesn't feel like going for them right away. And here he actually starts to go for this property. So that's interesting. Builds more infantry. Day four rolls in. Uh, I send my infantry down. Yeah, so this is another part where I think we're, we're we're playing very differently right here. I'm trying to think right here. So yeah, he is essentially right. So I'm sending my infantry down here. Interesting. Okay. And yeah, now I decide to go for this property too. One turn later than him. And yeah, I do the same thing. I go for this property. So both of us are going for this property right now here. So in the early game, we are playing very similarly. Like our play stars are very similar. And that kind of makes me happy. You know, that, that means that I'm not completely an idiot in the early game, at least. Like this is the world's best advanced worst player. If I'm doing relatively mirrored moves to him, then it means that at least I've got the uh, initial capture game you know, in order. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing any major mistakes, basically. Not to say this guy would never make a mistake, obviously, but he is far less likely to make a mistake compared to me, for example, having played so many matches and, and having so many wins under his belt. Like, he's, he's far more likely to understand the game better. That doesn't mean he's a perfect player, obviously. We gotta be careful not to, like, treat these people as, like, divine beings, you know, they're just human. He's just a human that has a lot more experience and a greater understanding of the game compared to me. So here, he decides to go for the airport, makes sense, he's playing as Eagle. So that is, um, you know, that is, uh, he's gonna utilize that extra, you know, he does get very strong battlecopters, you know, with 15% extra firepower and 10% extra defense. That is pretty strong, you know, his battlecopters are very scary. Uh, that is a very strong day-to-day -day bonus for sure. And here, already on day 5, he opens up with a tank. This is something I've seen a lot of high-level players do lately. Very rarely do I see top-rated players open recon. Or even transport. It seems to me, me that, at least on smaller maps, and particularly Fog of War maps, uh, opening up the early game tank does seem to be the strongest opener right now. I think one of the reasons why they tend to open tank is because they, the tank, while it has less vision on the recon, still does very effective against infantry, still does decent damage against infantry. It is not as fast as the recon, but it does traverse planes and forests more easily. So it sort of has the same mobility, as long as there's not too many roads around, the tank is actually more mobile than the recon, I would say. And if you happen to run into an enemy tank, you can actually do damage to it as opposed to the recon, which is completely helpless against it. So the more games that I play and spectate, the more I'm noticing the tank seems to be the best opener, at least on small maps. Maybe there are some other maps where the recon is better. This map does have a lot of roads, but they're not really connected. So the recon does have to traverse some plane tiles. So this is very interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm already learning a lot from spectating this match. So um, I'm going for the airport right now. Obviously, you want to capture that airport relatively quickly. And here, you know, I'm just continuing to cap properties right here. 10,000 to his 9,000. So leading slightly on the income right now, but that is because I do have that one extra infantry. So that is to be expected. So his turn rolls in now, sends his infantry onto the mountains to get some scouting. This is a decent move, he still has the ability to capture both this property and this property next turn, so it doesn't really cost him anything. He goes for the airport really quickly, that is pretty smart, and he starts capturing these two properties as well. He starts to capture this property, I've already begun capturing mine. So again, we're playing very similarly here, and I'm also opening up tank. Uh, at this point, uh, I am, I'm definitely aware that most people start opening tanks. This is a match that I played relatively recently, and I've been noticing that, I'm, that I'm, I often get punished when I open recon. So I have definitely started opening tank a lot more now. 
So here, he decides to go for this property in the middle. That's a smart move. And moves his tank into the middle immediately. So he knows this tank will be ready to take on any threats that appear in the center. And here he builds Recon Artillery. And this is very interesting. And you guys will see just how devastating this artillery ends up being later. Like, this artillery... Man, um... I'm telling you guys, if you want a good game showcasing how to utilize an artillery in the early game, this is this is the match, okay? Uh, this artillery was so incredibly well used. Like, I, God, I'm I'm gonna start hyping. Hy I'm gonna stop hyping it up and just show you guys because it is is incredible. Like how he utilized this thing. So here, I continue moving in. Uh, right now, I do have a, a good income lead on him, twelve thousand to his ten thousand. So, while I did say that you shouldn't open up Recon, and he opened up Recon, uh, what I mean by open up Recon is I mean build the Recon first. Now, he, he built a Recon second after the tank, which is very interesting, and I think this is something I might want to look into on very smaller maps. So, um, I think it's good to open up the tank and then maybe follow it up with a Recon, because then you have the Vision and the tank in the center, and the Recon should be fast enough to reach the tank anyway. So, as opposed to opening tank a Recon and then tank, I think it's better to open with tank first. So... Here I build my second tank, I'm not going to get out tanked, I've realized that, you know, most of the players that I go up against, they tend to just out tank me, so I'm just gonna go a lot of tanks on this map. So his day rolls in, he decides to start capturing this property near the bridge, he finishes capping his air porch, and yeah, he just continues to cap, I mean, he's, he's very strong on the cap game, right now 15,000 income really well. Moving his artillery in, and uh, you can already see how good an artillery can be on this map, like this position right here is made for the artillery, right? As long as you have an infantry on the mountain protecting it from an enemy infantry moving over here, it is impossible for your opponent to take down the artillery in one, one hit, because he would need to move a unit over here to spot it, and then he would have to attack it. The only difference, is, of course, is a battlecopter could move down on the transport and scout it. But as opposed, but aside from that, aside from a battlecopter moving in here, which is very likely to get shot down by Antire because it's so close to the base, and artillery on this forest tile is just perfect. And I think, I think my opponent realizes that, and that's why he built the artillery so early on. Again, I, I would say that's a, that's one of the biggest differences between a very experienced advanced force player and sort of like an intermediate level advanced force player is that the expert level advanced force player immediately recognizes the map and the advantages that certain units have on each map. Some maps are just not good for indirects. Some maps, you just don't want to build indirects because the maps are too open, they're too hard to guard. This map is clearly built for indirects, and you can see my opponent realizes that right away, builds an artillery at once before he builds the second tank. I was so scared at this point, I didn't want to... I, I, I didn't even want to go artillery early on because, you know, I, might, I, I was pretty nervous going into this match. I mean, playing against the Grandmaster, that's, that, that's going to give you some nerves, and... Going indirect against a, against a very skilled player, that's a very scary prospect, because you know they're going to be very good at flushing them out. So, but I definitely should have opened up artillery here. So here, he, he decides to build infantry. I build two tanks and an... Uh, sorry, two infantry and one tank. So here, I decide to do something pretty reckless. I go into this forest tile right here to see if he's capping, and of course, at this point, he's nowhere near that, but I'm not going to get this city. And I should have realized this, honestly. Trying to go for this city is just not a very good idea. I start capturing the comm tower. He hasn't even started capping his comm tower yet. Here I move over to the forest. I see that he's capping the property down here. I don't see the tank, though. He's doing a very good job hiding it. And I send my tank into this forest right here. A little bit reckless, honestly. I'm, I'm moving my tank into range of his tank, but I'm feeling confident because I have a second tank uh, backing it up. So, And I'm building a third tank and an anti-air immediately because I know I'm up against Eagle, and I know that that battlecopter is going to show up very soon. So here we go. Day 8 rolls in. Uh, my opponent uh, finishes capping this property right here. He goes to work on this northern property as well. He uses the mountain for vision. Very, very good move on him. And here we go. Perfect position for the artillery right here. Like, look how good this artillery is right now. Guards the city, guards the forest, guards the road. Like, this, this artillery is in a perfect position right now. But it's about to get a lot more annoying. So, yeah. He goes for more properties. Um, right now he has 7,000 to my 16,000, so he's doing pretty well on that, that front. M moves his recon in. This recon has a lot of vision. Um, just sorry, I'm just gonna do the whole turn again because I, I wanted to see the I wanted to see the total vision range of the recon, basically. So right now this recon can see yeah, I can see the airport, which is very smart. Uh, he's not moving his tank. That's a great position for his tank, by the way. Like, here it's hidden, it's blocking the bridge, and it's ready to move out if anything happens in the center. 
So, so far, 16,000, so, so I've already lost in the capture game right here. I am player two, I should have a capture advantage, and yet he is at 17,000 to my 16,000. And you see, one of the biggest issues right now is I haven't captured this neutral property yet, nor have I captured this property yet. So this guy is just better at capturing than me, but that, that is pretty much expected. So, I decided to, s I send my infantry down here, but I remember I forget to actually capture the city for a pr pretty long while, so I guess I just got stressed out. Here I do something absolutely stupid, I go for this property. I should have realized just by the layout of this map that I would never have gotten this. So, but yeah, that was a big mistake on my end, like, way too cocky for me to think that I was gonna actually get this. I see he has a tank here, I see, I don't, I don't see the recon, but I see he has plenty of units in the vicinity. So I move in the entire, and honestly, like, I don't know why I'm moving it this way. I should be moving the entire towards this area, because this is the only area where Battlecopters can come from. And as you can see right now, his Battlecopter is already in position to interrupt this capture. So this entire going down here makes no sense. I should have, honestly, I should have built the entire here on this base. One, two, three, four, five, six. I could have moved the entire here this turn, and the entire would have been in range of the city to shoot down the Battlecopter. So already, this this one move is gonna cost me a city, pretty much, right? Because you can see he will he will attack my infantry next turn with his battlecopter. Had I built the entire here, moved it over here, it would have been able to shoot down the battlecopter next turn. But because I moved it in this space and moved it here, it is not in position. So that that's a huge advantage in the early game lost, and this just really shows how important it is to deploy your units properly, you know? And to think, you know, I should have thought like th think, Manx, think, you know, like. Airport is here. There's not gonna be a Battlecopter coming from the south. There's only one airport on the map. So why am I moving my 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 entire here? Why would I have it behind this river? It can't it can't move over a river, so again, really annoying. And here I also do something kinda reckless. I go in with the tank and I start shooting on his infantry here. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna be very aggressive here. I should have known he would have several tanks in the vicinity as an artillery right here. But still, I'm building another tank. I'm deciding to go heavy on the early game aggression, you know? D9 rolls in, and uh, he moves his recon in, he gets a lot of vision. Again, this guy actually built two recons, so, uh, you know, opening up the early game recon, apparently not that good, but having them in the mid game, apparently pretty important. So here comes the Battlecopter, and yeah, look at that. I could have shot this down this turn, easily, you know, had I had the anti in range. So annoying to watch. He moves his tank down here, and, you know, this is just... You know, when I when I watched this, I was just like, what is he doing? Why is he doing this? You know, why is he not attacking my tank head on? Well, it's quite simple. He has his artillery right here. So he's placing the tank beautifully within guarding range of his artillery. Any engagements that I take against his tank right now will result in my tank getting shelled. And this is why this artillery is such a beautifully placed unit, right? So he's just going, okay, fine. Uh, I'm not going to go head to head with your tanks. You have two tanks here, probably a, a third tank somewhere in the fog. I'm just gonna move my tank down here, take a shot at your infantry. I have the artillery guarding the tank. It ain't no thing. He moves this uh, infantry into the forest, takes a shot at my infantry. And in here, I see that he has an indirect. And this is where I go like, wow, he has an indirect already? Damn, that's quick. And of course, I realize, okay, there's an artillery right here. And how can I spot this artillery right now? It's impossible. The only way I can spot it is to move a tank in here, but then I won't be able to shoot at it. So again, the, the positioning is so good for that. He moves in with his infantry and drops my cap and starts capping himself, like it's no big deal, you know? <laughs> it starts to go for this capture right here. So you can already tell, like, the level of this, this guy's plays are just phenomenal. But I'm not really that behind yet. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm 2,000 behind on the income front because I haven't captured this property yet. So he builds two tanks and a recon. Again, this guy built a lot of recons. A lot of recons. I'm very, like, I'm surprised to see this level of recons. You'd think maybe two recons would be enough, but I think this guy is so confident in his artillery that he doesn't feel the need to spam. Like, he's, he's still built two tanks, but still, I'm, I'm very surprised he built so many recons. So here I do a good old-fashioned join cap, you know, um, and then I do something pretty stupid. In my opinion, I move the I move the entire like this. I can't see it, but you should probably know it's there. So this is what I mean when I say that this river is making battlecopters very good. Because look at the range of my entire right now. There are plenty of great opportunities for him to escape. Like he, as long as he positions his battlecopter just behind the river, this entire cannot do anything, and it, it can just keep going around the river, like cha like basically playing a game of like round robin with the with the entire. This is why I say that, like, Eagle, I understand why my opponent picked Eagle for this map, because he, he he probably immediately recognized how strong Battlecopters are on this map, with this river right here. The more river ranges and mountains there are on the map, the better Battlecopters become. 
because Battlecopters can just dart behind the rivers and take cover from the entire. And it's just so incredible. It makes them so good. So here, I decided to go for a transport. And my, 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 basically my thinking process with this is I still am not completely aware of how this guy plays, but I've noticed that the top players build a lot of tanks. So my idea is I build a, a transport copter early, I get a lot of tanks, uh, mechs ferried into the front lines, and I try to take some very cost-effective engagements with mechs in the, in the middle of the map. And maybe I can earn myself a good, a good value by that time. So that's at least what I'm thinking. I'm building a Battlecopter myself because I recognize how good Battlecopters are on this map. And here I do something else which I think is just incredibly reckless. I move down here and I attempt to cap his property. I don't know why I thought this would be a good idea. Again, this is just not a good move because I'm basically just giving him a free infantry at this point. Like, I should know he has plenty of things to capture. And like, you should only capture properties when you're applying pressure to your opponent, right? Right now, I'm applying zero pressure. I'm not attacking any of his units. He can comfortably interrupt these caps with no risk to himself. However, if this cap had come in the middle of a big push, then he would have been forced to divert resources away from defending that push to interrupt the cap. That is when captures are strong. Just capturing on your own when there's nothing going on is like that's that that doesn't that, that doesn't inflict pressure on your opponent. That just gives them a free infantry to kill. So uh, a, a lesson that I will definitely take away from this match is don't go for captures on your opponent's properties unless you're also pressuring them and attacking them. There's no point, right? This infantry is just dying. Instead, what I should have done probably is place the infantry in this forest. Then, then it would have been maybe able to trap some of his units moving in and it would have been ready to go in for a capture on this property, potentially, if a big battle broke out. So, yeah. So, I move my infantry into the center. I move my tanks back here, because uh, I see that he has an artillery, and honestly, like, I, I'm gonna be honest, I was just shit scared at this point. Like, <laughs> you, you're really nervous going up against a, like, no, just knowing that this guy is, like, one of the best Advanced Wars players just made me really hesitant to do anything. And this is probably a weakness, you know, I think this is pretty common when you, when you punch way, way above your weight class, like, you do kind of freeze up, you know, you do kind of get scared. You don't, your ability to get very reckless and do extreme gambits, that will definitely go down when you place a very, when you fight against a very top level player. I think if I had randomly matched up against this guy on the league and I had no idea how good he was, I probably would have played very differently. So, nerves, definitely a big factor here. And still, I am just forgetting to capture this property, and I think this this can just be chalked down to me just being nervous, I think. I, I'm not playing properly, and we were playing this match in real time, which means we this match took place, we played this match pretty much in one sitting, uh, we caught each other online at the same time, so I noticed, you can see that there are like two people observing the game, and that's how you know that your opponent is currently playing, and we were playing pretty fast, so I didn't get like, it was not like I did a turn, and then like an hour passed, then I came back and did another turn, I did, I, we played actually this map in one sitting which is, they call it playing in real time. That's the, the expression that I've seen them use. So here I decided to build my artillery. I think it's a little too late. I should have built this like on day six instead I'm building it on day nine. So day 10 rolls in, he finished capping his property. Now he's 2000 ahead of me. Again, look, like, look, he's moving his recon into the forest. Imagine if this infantry, instead of being on this property, if it was in this forest, blocking him from taking it, right? So that's, that's such a good position for his recon, too, because I have to move a unit in to scout it, and then I can attack it, you know? And look at him. Look at him. <laughs> Immediately recognizing the strength of that river. My Antire just cannot catch up with this Battlecopter. I'll need to build a second Antire to catch him. He interrupts my cap, moves in his tank, moves in his infantry, interrupts my cap on the river. And look at this. Moving his artillery into the city, surrounding it, He's not even surrounding it properly, I think. No, he's leaving it like that. He builds an Antire, two infantry, because he's because he has this recon right here scouting my airport, so he knows exactly when a battlecopter comes out. So yeah, yeah, never mind. Yeah, so you didn't it, it was the, the replay glitched out a little bit, but yeah, no, this infantry did indeed move. So look how well he's placing this artillery right here. Not only is it on, on top of a city, which means it's very hard to take down. But it's surrounded by three infantry units. And this artillery is pretty much just covering the entire middle right here. Just look at look at this guy's positioning. Look at how well he positions his units. It's insane just to look at it. And while I do actually have a slight value lead in terms of our forces right now, he has an income lead, and his positioning is far superior to mine. I actually don't think I have a value lead. I think this is a UI bug. I refuse to, to believe I have a value lead right now. I think this probably represents the end of the turn. 
So yeah, I decide I have to get aggressive here, so I move in. I move in my, my infantry, I see that he has a lot. And here I just go, okay, I'm gonna try and attack his artillery now, and you'll see why this is completely hopeless, right? So I take a shot at his artillery, on the city. And this might seem good on paper, right? Yay, you get to take a shot at, at your opponent's artillery. Okay, it's on 5 HP, it will repair up to 7 HP next turn, and a, an artillery on 7 HP can still do a fair bit of damage. So this didn't really end up hurting it that much. And look, I got three tanks, they're sitting ducks in the center. Look how many tanks can attack my tanks right now. So he baited me into attacking his artillery, and he led me right into his trap. Now here we go, the transport has come in, and here I move in my tank. I, I don't really know why I thought this would be a good idea. I'm just placing another tank in range. I guess my rationale was I'm already being aggressive, so I might as well go all in. You know, there's there, there's no point in, like, half committing to an attack. Either you move in with everything you have or you move in with nothing. You should never move in, like, half of your forces. That's not a very good idea. Unless you're kind of splitting your attacks, I guess, over two areas. Then maybe it's a good idea, but not in this situation. So, I, I move in a mech in the center here, and uh, I build an anti-air because I have to. More tanks, more infantry. And here, you will see just the most devastating turn, right? Just look at this. So he starts capturing my property, and, and again, unlike me earlier, who just did this on my own, this guy is capturing my property while applying pressure. So I'll be forced to divert one of our, my units to interrupt this capture while I'm dealing with a big push. So in comes the recon, takes out my infantry on the mountain, he charges in, the Empire is in position, takes out, or does a good shot on my mech, gets a good shot on my tank right here on the city, takes out my tank, Damages my mech, kills my mech, artillery shells the tank, tank tank takes out the tank, Batacopter takes out the tank, recon goes for the infantry, destroys my infantry, destroys my tank. My god, what a what a massacre. What an absolute massacre. And follows it up with the medium tank. Because let's be real, he won the game right now. But I'm gonna try and play against him, so I pop my side slip. You know, I almost have my. It's never a good good sign when you get your superpower in turn 11. Like almost get your superpower. That means you've taken a pummeling. You know, so I try my best here to just do a counter attack. You know, I move in with my uh, my anti air. I move in with my tanks. I take another shot at this artillery just because I'm like, okay, I can kill it, so why not? I move in with my Botocopter, hoping he doesn't have Antire in the vicinity, even though I see that he has a Botocopter of his own. I go for the HQ cap because I'm like, okay, let's just try this. Maybe maybe he doesn't have anything. That'd be a hilarious way to win. I tried to go for the capture here. I probably should have attacked something instead. And again, this artillery is just failing to be effective right here. It's not arriving any time to be effective. Yeah, that was an absolutely failed counterattack. Like, look at our value difference right now. 92,000 to 78,000. He's just going to continue his aggression here, takes up my anti-air, moves in his anti-air, completely destroys me, takes a shot. I mean, this guy's just doing everything right. I see the medium tank interrupting my HQ cap, and I'm like, oh my god, I am so incredibly boned right here. The recon comes in. Yeah, I mean, this is this is painful to watch. I mean, this is like watching a, a lightweight beginner boxer going up against Mike Tyson, right? This is just... It's just a massacre, you know? Like, it's, uh... This, this guy is just rolling over me. I just remember sitting here just going like, Well, that went about as well as I expected it to. So, yeah. Uh, I do believe I end up playing... I end up playing one more turn. I remember I was like, okay, I'm at least gonna try and counter him a little bit. I get my side slip, I activate it. But, uh, I mean, at this point... It's only a matter of time before he blows me off the map. You see, he's already going for my HQ, and he's going to get it pretty soon anyway. You know, <laughs> I go for a shot on his infantry. Finally, I get my artillery and enter the position it needs to be at, but like six days too late. So day 13, he goes for my HQ cap. I mean, this is just painful, man. This is just painful. It takes up my tank, takes up my infantry. He charges in with everything. God, there's a little glitch here with the recon on top of the tank. I think that will fix itself once we get to the next turn. Medium tank against Antair. <laughs> oh my god, this is uh, this is painful to watch. Yeah, 
So day 13 rolls in, I'm pretty sure I resign here. Yeah, I decided to throw in the towel. I got massacred. And honestly, like, I didn't expect anything else. But I will say I'm a little surprised in the fashion that you just bowled over me. But honestly, just watching this game, I, I feel like I learned a ton. And this is where you learn. You learn by challenging people who are better than you. This is how you get better at any game. You cannot just keep fighting against... I mean, sure, fighting against people of the same skill level, that will give you a little bit of knowledge. Finding people who are worse than you, that will almost feed into your bad habits. But, um, but fighting people who are just so much better than you, watching how they play, watching how they move, seeing their decisions, seeing how they react to situations, I mean, this is the stuff you learn from. This is the thing that makes you evolve as a player. And watching this guy play, I just got very inspired. I got very inspired, just looking at his playstyle. And it's just insane to see, you know, this this game has such a high skill cap. And 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 keep in mind, like he didn't even get his lightning strike. He 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 mopped the floor with me without even once using any powers. Sure, he had a he had a little bit of extra firepower on his battle copters, but uh, for the most part, I, I wouldn't really say that did a lot in this match. Um, you know, he, he he just as well could have been playing a CO with no CO powers activated, and he still would have won against me. So, I mean, I saw the lightning strike come, but at, th at that point, it was already GG, you know? So, I, I can't blame this on this guy playing a higher tiered CO, because it didn't really end up mattering in the end. But looking at this match, I mean, just seeing the way this guy moves, I mean, he, he read the map perfectly. He positioned his units perfectly. He took all of his engagements perfectly. Uh, he, he, he didn't make a single mistake that I could see in this match. Uh, his, his, his game was just perfect. And, I mean, this is what I expect from one of the highest rated Advanced Wars players in the world. And I thought this was a fantastic match. Really learned a lot from it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I think this is one of my favorite replay castings so far. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Let me know if you have any other suggestions for something I should do. Do you want to see me challenge more top rated players on the site? Uh, would you like to... Any special formats you'd like to see? You know, just let me know in the comment section. Uh, any cool ideas. You know, I always love getting inspiration from you guys. You guys have a lot of great suggestions, so bring it on. And as always, guys, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Bye-bye.